Hi everyone, Dave here at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. Welcome. Today I'm going to tie an oldie but a goodie, the casual dress. Polly Roseboro, a noted fly tire fisherman, author from Oregon, the West Coast, who just recently passed. This was one of his signature flies, and it's made entirely out of muskrat fur with a little bit of ostrich for the head. This can be any, any type of nymph. It can be tied in sizes from 6 to 12. I'm going to be tying a size 10, <coughs> pardon me, 3X long. Ring eye hook, if you have a down eye hook, that's fine. And I'll be using muskrat for the entire fly. Now the problem with muskrat is you buy it, is typically you buy a small patch. The small patch may not contain all of the hairs that you need. A full muskrat skin, for example, like this, shows you that there's quite a difference in the type of hair. The belly hair is very soft, it's good for the body, but when you need guard hairs, the back of the animal has those guard hairs that we need for the tail and for the collar. So just be aware that there are differences in packages of muskrats that you buy. If you have a friend that has a, a scrap, I have a friend who made himself a, a scrap hat, he gave me the scrap, which is perfect. I got the back and I've got two belly pieces. Don't confuse muskrat with beaver. Beaver is a longer fur, quite a bit more under fur. Guard hairs are useful on both of them, even for tails on dry flies. They can be plucked and stacked. So let's tie this thing. I think you'll find this a very useful nymph under a lot of situations. Daiichi 2460, which is a 3X long ring eye. If you have the 2461, which is a down eye hook, also 3X long, that's fine. I just think a ring eye hook gives you better side to side movement. This is a UTC 140 black. Any black thread will work here. Now you can weight this as heavily as you want. I'm to save time here on the video, I'm not going to go through, but uh, round lead, wired, lead or non-lead will work fine on this. For tail, we want a patch, a piece of muskrat that also has a good number of guard hairs. For this, I'm gonna be using some of the hair that's along the back of the hide, not the belly. Now we pinch off a decent sized piece here and trim it. You can see the guard hairs and the under fur quite clearly. I'm going to take off some of this under fur just to reduce the bulk on the tail. Muskrat fur was the original dubbing for the Adams. It's naturally waterproof, it's the right color, and it dubs very easily. Make the tail about a half a hook shank in length and simply tie that in. Normally I would be a little concerned about this bump, but we are going to make dubbing the way that Polly made it, and that will cover that up. So I'm going to make a dubbing loop here. It's one of the most powerful tools in fly tying. And I'm going to make this loop go about two thirds of the length of the body. I'm going to leave room for collar and a little bit of head. Go ahead and put a half hitch there to hold it. Okay. So for the abdomen, the body of the fly, we're going to be using mostly the guard hairs, the belly fur of the uh, muskrat. Polly uses a unique method. He called a dubbing noodle, which is basically just a rope of dubbing fur. This has advantages, as you'll see when we tie this in, that it gives a much more segmented look than you would if you just simply put it in the, in the uh, loop and twisted it like we're used to doing. So I'm just getting some fur and mixing it up here. And on my lap, I'm just rubbing this with my hand like this. So, say if your hands come together, that's an even better way to do it, but you're just rubbing it into this kind of a preformed noodle. I think noodle's a pretty good word for it. Get it nice and tight here. Now, 
Okay, now we've got our noodle lined up in a dubbing loop. I'm going to say we're going to twist it clockwise. This helps to tighten this as we wrap it. Nice and tight. And then you'll see as we wrap this, you'll see the segmentation start to show up, which you simply cannot get if you put your hair crosswise in the loop as we're used to doing and then wrapping it. So you get segmentation here as well as a really strong body. So I'm going to take this up to about two-thirds point. And tie it off. Now for the collar, we're going to be using a much more of the guard hairs, and that should come from the back of the animal. So once again, shorter dubbing loop, because we're only going to be making a collar here a couple of inches long. I like to bring it back into the abdomen a little bit. Make sure we don't have that telltale plumber's crack. And bring this about one eye length shy of the eye in preparation for the head. So for this, I'm going to be using more of the back of the skin where the guard hairs are much longer. I'm going to pull out some of the under fur, but not much of it. And lay this in the loop. Keep the guard hairs fairly even so that when we wrap the collar, we can finesse it into having of a wet fly collar. Like so. And then we'll spread this last bunch out. So you see this is predominantly guard hairs. A little bit of under fur. And then once again, spin this clockwise. Okay, now I'm going to transfer this to hackle pliers so I can control this a little better. So with each wrap, Want to make sure we stroke these fibers back just like you were wrapping regular um, chicken hackle. And you get that prominent collar. one I tied at home is much prettier than this one. Make sure that's tied down. Bring that back a little bit. Collar should be a little more compact than that. And then for the head, <clears throat> couple of hurls of ostrich, black ostrich. This size fly, I like to go ahead and use two. Now ostrich, like peacock, does not grow all around the feather. It grows off of one side. So it's a V-shaped hurl. And tying it in properly will make sure that you get the most out of that. So make sure that the quills are lined up and that the hurl Stands up on top. Where'd you go? That way when you wrap it, you want the quill leading. That will really make that hurl stand up and also give you a much fluffier appearance.
Just give that a few wraps, and then we'll tie it off. And that's primarily the reason for the black thread is the black head on this. All right. Well, that is one ugly nymph there, folks. Like I say, the collar should be a little more compact like this one. But this is a, a nymph with great movement. Fish it with caddis, fish it for mayflies, fish it for stoneflies. They all appeared in Polly's home waters and a casual dress was a good fly for that. Thanks for joining in, and we'll see you next time.